Today is March the 19th, 2021. Now this is something that I dare say every old ham radio operator has seen a lot of times in the uh, old ARRL publications, radio amateur handbooks, etc. on a VHF amplifier. But I don't know if you've ever seen one in the, in the flesh. Well, I built this one back probably in the early 80s. So it's probably built it somewhere around close to 40 years ago. And let me show you what it is. You'll recognize it if you've if you've seen these old things before, these old schematics. It's an 829. It's really dusty. It's been up in the my attic for a while. I'm going to clean it up here. I'll show you underneath it. Show you how it performs. It's an 829. It's which is a dual uh, uh, tetrode, I guess it is. VHF thing, push pull. Here it's actually turned on right now, but there's a high voltage on it. This is the uh, tuning capacitor. I'll show you how that operates. See, it's very small. It's for the 146 megahertz uh, frequencies. This uh, this capacitor has crossed this tuned circuit right here, and this is the loading control. This is the output link. This is a piece of metal, and you can see the the two connections right there. That probe underneath is probably not helping, but the the two connections come straight out of that loop and uh, go into this uh, BNC connector, which goes to a TR relay underneath. It's got a VR tube right here. This is for the bias. Let me turn the lights off here. Oh, you, oh, you can sort of see that when it's focused. The other two tubes are for the screen, and they only come on. I think I can uh, turn them on right now, right quick, just so you can see it turn on. Let's see if I can get it picked up right. Yeah, see, the VR tube come on for the screen when you initialize it. I'm driving it with this little uh, HT right here. Driving it at 146.52 simplex into this dummy load right here. Let me put the lights back on. And I'm measuring it through this uh, bird line section. It's a hundred watt line section. I think it's upside down. No it's not. You can, you can see it's not upside down. Uh, if I put it bypass like that then um, the amp it just feeds straight through the amplifier. If I put it online, then uh, the RF from the um, from the HT is what actually actuates it. Here's a schematic of it that I found that I put inside it back uh, going on the 40 years ago. I used to draw some really nice schematics. See, uh, let me see if I can lay this thing flat so you can actually see it. Here's, uh, of course, the input. Here's a little. Uh, little transistor circuit that uh, that, take, that samples a little bit of RF and uh, turns on this transistor that pulls in this relay. This is a high voltage uh, relay right here actually. It's, uh, it's a link coupled. I'll show you all that underneath. Push pull grids to and here's, here's that piece of metal right here. This, this right here and this this tuning capacitor and this loop, or this piece right here, that's the tuning capacitor, and then there's the loop. And again, there's the pickup loop, that's the output loop, and how close it gets to and from the uh, tuned circuit is the loading, and that's this uh, circuit right here. So one side goes through a capacitor to ground, the other side goes out, so you tune it. And it works! Uses a little tiny uh, 1.8 microhenry uh, RF chokes. Here's the VR tubes for the screen, as you can see. And then it's got a VR tube down here with adjustable bias for the uh, for the grid. We've got 830 volts right there. That's what I measured it at at one time. It it appears. I'll show you what it is right now. It's a little bit lower than that right now. It is. Uh, well, we got to enable it here, and then the high voltage is actually only about 750. If you can read that, 750. I'm doing the best I can with the camera. It's kind of hard to <coughs> operate around high voltage with a camera and everything. But anyway, there it is. 
plate current, you might be interested in that, is about 160 milliamps. And you can hear those relays pick up and everything. Of course, it's not loaded up properly, but I will show you that. I'm gonna, well, let's look underneath it right quick. <clears throat> and then I'll uh, dust it off real good. And uh, we'll measure its input and output and see what we get. This is a fan, of course, to keep it cool. And yeah, nice breeze on it. Okay, here it is underneath. I did go ahead and power it off and unplug it and everything. See, the RF comes in right here, goes through this little relay, little TR relay. This is the antenna changeover relay. Yeah, you, you do lose quite a bit. This is not VHF quality components here, but you know, you got to do what you can. So, uh, in the bypass condition, it just comes in, goes through this relay, goes through the antenna change relay, and goes uh, right back out. But when the changer over relay is energized, then uh, here's the input loop right here. And there's the grid tuning. Little, you got to make everything very, very short and uh, right at the point. So it's all built right onto the bottom of the tube socket. This is something grounded over here. I don't know what it is grounded. I'd have to look up the pin number. But this is a little split stator butterfly type capacitor. There, the, from here to here and across this is the tube circuit. Again, this is the input link. Uh, I don't know every part in it anymore. It's been too long ago. This, I'm sure, is a bias control. And, and again, this is the, um, the part that's sampling a little bit of RF. You, see, you can see I'm picking a little bit of RF off right here of the input. Through a tiny capacitor and a little transistor there, it's probably picking up this relay right here. <sighs> Power supply down here, and so on. I guess this is probably the high voltage power supply over here. The diodes on it. I don't know what that is. What would that be? Bias? Yeah, probably bias. I'm guessing. Some old capacitors, but I guess they're still good. And of course, I like to label things with danger. <laughs> I'm trying to save my own life, too, you know. Got some uh, angle tuning in here where it goes up to these little gearboxes so that I can tune it from the front. Let's see if I turn this thing right here. I think you'll see that little capacitor moving right there. You see it tuning? Hmm. Now, I've had it for a long time. I used to talk to my friend up in... Oh, yeah, this thing is kind of loose. So look at that. I'm turning it that much. And this is doing nothing. So i got something loose in it. I don't want to... Looks like it's not turning right there. Well, it's probably just a lot of friction. It turns eventually. <laughs> I could talk to my, felt, uh, my friend up in um, Cloudcroft with it, uh, Simplex. Uh, but he didn't have a lot of power. He'd talk to me back on uh, one of the repeaters. So there it is. That's the uh, that's the two meter. I call it two meter class C RF amplifier. And there it is, right there. Let's dust it off and uh, make some power measurements. See if it's uh, as alive as it used to be. Okay. Well, here's uh, data sheets on it for the 829B, and this what we're running it at is a push pull RF amplifier. Class C FM tele telephony. 750 volts, as you can see, I can't point at it. And, well, I guess I could lay it down. 750 volts on the plate, mm, all the way down. <clears throat> so that we want like minus 50 volts on the grid. Oh, and uh, 225 on the screen, things like that. Typical operation there as well, 750. So the bias, I actually put an adjustment back here. I even put minus 50 volts bias written on it. So we will um, look at the bias right here on the grid. I can clip that on. There's no drive going into it now, and uh, that's what it's sitting at right now. That's a 50 volt scale. It's about this. Pretty much right there, isn't it? I don't even know if it's worth fooling with, but we'll fool with it. So we can set it right on 50. Oh, there we go. It does work, doesn't it? Don't get too far. Sorry for the wiggling, but 
Okay, that's close enough. <clears throat> and the screen, let's just look at my own schematic. I got 250. Okay, 250 on the screen. And that's over here on pin 3. Now that should not be on now. And it's not. We put this on 250. Let's see, now I got actuated, I believe. Let's see what it is. There it is. Just a hair over 250. It's close enough. Okay. And we already measured our plate voltage. So, it looks like it's pretty good. Let's see what kind of. Let me lay this thing back down, see what kind of power we can get out of it. I also noticed that the, uh, see there is a date on the fan, 1884, that's probably when it was built. That's a pretty good indicator of it. Some things, let's see, let me point out some things like right here, you might notice this little coil right there. I made videos of this before. This is, this is how you shunt the meters to read what you want them to. Many meters are one milliamp meter or one milliamp movements, and you have to put a shunt across them. You have to play with it. I'm not going to get into it right now, but I have made some videos of how to how to deal with these shunts and make them uh, make your meter read whatever you want it to read. And of course, that shunt right there makes this meter read um, 300 milliamps full scale. Okay, let's see if I can do this with one hand. Well, I cleaned it up. I pulled the tubes out. And reseated them, you know, just to make sure. And we've checked the voltages, so they're about right. So let's see what kind of power we can get out of it. I don't know if I can do this in one hand or not. Let's put our meter right up here so we can look at the power, hopefully without a lot of glare. I don't think I can. i got to put this on a... I'm going to have to put this on a uh, tripod. Okay, now we can keep it out on the meter there. I got the 100 watt element in it, and I um, can't show you everything. But let's actuate it. Well, we're getting nothing through, are we? Let's see. Absolutely nothing. That's not good. Whoa. Let's maybe find the grid tuned right. Oh, there we go. Look at there. There you go. Alright, we got that's uh tune the grid there. Let's tune the plate. Let's see what we're getting here. We got it up to 60 watts. Yeah, there's so, there's a lot of slop in the uh in the grid tuning. Can't okay, seem to keep my uh there we go, I think I'll leave that right there, okay. I'll do the uh, plate loading about 62 watts. Put back and forth to the plate tuning. So I'm getting mm, about 64 watts. Well, that's what I get. That's about it. Seems to be nice and steady, doesn't it? That's at 146.52 simplex. All right. Let's take the. Let me take that off. Take the camera off. Take a peek down in it being called a dinner right now so I'm gonna to have to go do that there's that pretty little tube again and I love this stuff absolutely well anyway there it is let's uh I'll see uh I'll be back in a few just a second here on the video and we'll uh, see if there's anything else to be said about it I guess the last thing to show about it is um, I, I got to noticing in the schematic uh, this little capacitor right here, this input loading capacitor, and was it really there? And it is. And then the, the other one, this one right here, is it really there? And so I started touching them up. Well, this one right here is actually right there. I can't put my finger there. It's that little. It's that little yellow thing. If you look down in here, you can actually see. If I get up too close, you can't it won't focus. You can see this loop goes into one side, and the other side goes to ground. Well, that one is really, really touchy. I almost regretted turning it, but I got it back to where it, where it's supposed to be, 
and uh, it's working again. So that capacitor is there and it doesn't matter where it's sitting. It has to be, it's extremely critical. But I guess it hasn't moved in all of these uh, years. And then the, uh, the loading capacitor, which I had kind of forgotten about, is uh, this guy right here, output loading. But it was all peaked up too, so everything's just right. So you have to make some of your own, uh, you, you very well may, See now, can you see it in there? Yeah, right there. There's the, there's the plate choke. It's got to be a, a little thing. You can't put a, a great big uh, plate choke in there, or the capacitance of the ground would be so great it would, it would drain everything. But between, uh, you know, it's possible that if I tinkered with it enough, between here, and and then uh, this this loop up here, exactly where this where this loop you know, loads into it. I'm going to pull it back a little bit. You can see how that pulls back. Uh, if I tinkered with it a little bit more, somewhere between here and and then this uh, capacitor down here, I might be able to get it to load a little bit higher. But I think I'm going to quit at that. I believe it's still doing its job after going on close to 40 years. So there you go. I hope this is uh, interesting to some of you guys. It's... Uh, Certainly not needed for any kind of uh, repeater work, I don't think. But if you like to work simplex, it might be fun. I guess the next thing for me to do is go out and uh, put it in my truck. I do have a uh, AC supply in there. And uh, <laughs> it'll run it from there, but I don't think I'll do that tonight. Well, anyway, thanks for watching all of you all out there in uh, YouTube land, and uh, stay safe. Get the loading and uh, of the output tune circuit. In case you're ever interested in building one of these, it's always nice to see one that sort of works. Oh, I'll ask you guys a question. I know this is a little late, but I really, really would like to buy some of these little clips. Those are coil clips, you know, where you can put a wire onto the coil and then you can jumper it uh, to uh, another link on the coil to, to short it out. And I have looked and looked and looked and I cannot find them. If you know where I can buy these things, please let me know.